came to us. Praise the Lord. Real glory. We're so glad to have each and every one of you with us today. Amen. God is faithful. I tell you, we um, appreciate. Uh, I want to uh, thank all of you that uh, have been helping us uh, on the renovations upstairs. And appreciate your faithfulness and your commitment. Amen. To uh, to make the house of God pretty and beautiful. Amen. I tell you, we are these kids. Are, this was a long time coming. Our kids deserve an atmosphere. Amen. That is on their level. They desire or they uh, uh, deserve that. And uh, we have, uh, when, we, when we're finished, it's going to be quite exciting. Uh, each one of those rooms are different colors, and they're bright colors. They're bright colors. And we've got uh, fun time uh, carpet, which will be put up there, and it's all uh, kid-oriented. And it's just exciting uh, what God has given us the ability and the opportunity to do. Amen. Those kids are going to enjoy it. Amen. They're going to enjoy it. I want to uh, uh, thank Bob uh, for his uh, uh, faithfulness and commitment. And also, uh, Sister Brenda uh, Cranford. Amen. And now I'm naming names here now, okay? And... Uh, want to thank Marsha uh, Burris and uh, also um, Kathy Langley and Diane uh, Keenan uh, for all that you've done. Uh, we appreciate it so, so very much. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And also we had several others that showed up and uh, have done some things and uh, helped us move all that stuff around. And so um, we, and we will probably ask, maybe need some more help on that a little bit later, but we we want to uh, thank each and every one of you. Amen. Our text this morning will be taken in 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 19. 2 Kings uh, chapter 2 and verse 19. How many has ever heard uh, someone say that when you come to a church in the middle of the night and all the lights are out and it's it's dark Everywhere it's dark, that it's kind of spooky. It's kind of spooky. Well, I tell you, your pastor came up in here with a great man of God, great faith, I'm telling you. He came up here, and I was sitting in my office, and I mean it was pitch dark outside. And it wasn't this morning, but, but uh, it, it was... Uh, dark outside, dark everywhere, and I was sitting in my office, and all of a sudden I heard, <laughs> I said, I know there's got to be an explanation to this, so I got up and I started walking toward, every so often I'd hear, <laughs> So I kept walking, kept walking. I came downstairs, and I couldn't hear it. Then I heard it at the other end of the hall. <laughs> so I went down and made my way down there, and I went in the nursery, and it was quiet. I didn't hear nothing, not one thing. I turned around and started to walk out the door of the nursery, and I had my back to, uh, to the nursery. I was walking out, and it went, <laughs> That's, somebody needs to get rid of that stu that doll down there that does, that does that laughing, okay? I almost rang its neck. <laughs> I'm telling you. But you got a great man of, you know, faith here, you know, I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. I was about to call my wife. Amen. But we, we made it through it. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse 19. It says, And the men of the city said unto Elijah, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. The, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth. But the waters is not, and the ground barren. 
And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth into the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elijah which he spake. This morning I want to minister on the subject reverse the curse. Reverse the curse. How many, amen, need some things reversed in your life? You need a turnaround. You need a, a divine reversal. Hallelujah. I believe God has foreordained this service this morning. I believe that you are here, amen, on purpose because God is about to reverse the curse. Reverse the the curse. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to be in this house. Lord, I humble myself before you. I submit myself to you and I ask you, O oh God, to speak in me and through me. Lord, sweet Holy Spirit, Lord, let the fire, O oh God, fall upon the messenger. Let me speak with the fire and the power of Pentecost. Lord, I pray that you would touch every heart and every life that is in this place. And Lord, that that you would bless our altar services, that everyone that receives this word would come and receive, oh Lord, that blessing which you have prepared for them. Lord, don't let anybody leave this place, amen, unsaved. Don't let anybody leave this place, amen, burdened down, amen, with the things of this world. But Lord, bring them, Lord, to this altar so that you might reverse the curse. Oh God, we give you honor and we give you glory in Jesus precious name and everybody said amen and amen you may be seated here this morning our text today was found amen second kings in chapter 2 where Elijah had been serving amen the great prophet Elijah for years and in this chapter amen the days of Elijah were nearing the end and the servant Elijah faithfully had been following his master and as the chariots of fire came out of heaven amen to take Elijah the mantle of Elijah amen fell at the feet of his servant Elijah and so when Elijah picked it up the mantle of Elijah he request his request was given and Elijah received a double portion of the anointing and after Elijah crossed back over the Jordan to Jericho the men of the city came to him for the waters were cursed and bitter and the land had become barren so he took the salt and he cast it into to the waters and spoke the word of God over the waters and the curse was reversed and the curse was Reverse. I want to tell you this morning that the greater one is in the house. The greater one is in the house today. He is here. Amen. Greater than Elijah. Greater than Elisha. You see, Elijah had a portion of anointing. Elijah had a double portion of the anointing. But Jesus Christ is the anointing. Hallelujah. Personified. Oh, Oh, listen, saints of God, I challenge you today, do not leave this place, amen, with the burden, amen, with the thing that is so, uh, uh, so, uh, faithfully has tormented you or tempted you or tried you or test you this is the place amen to shuck it off this is the place in the day to get rid of it glory to God oh listen you may be here today and you've been in a make or break situation you need a right now miracle not a year from now amen a month from now amen or a week from now but a right now miracle oh, Oh, I'm talking about the overnight turnaround. Well, God is the God of the turnaround. Hallelujah. Everybody say turnaround. 
Amen. He's our divine intervention. He's our divine reversal. Glory to God. If you need a curse reversed, He can do it. He turned the curse into a blessing. Overnight, God can turn that thing around. Overnight, God can turn the curse into a blessing. I think about David. Amen. He went from a nobody, an unknown, on the backside of nowhere, doing a job nobody wanted wanted to do to do to a somebody who was known all over Israel as a shepherd boy who killed the giant he went from an unknown from the front page glory to God of the paper hallelujah oh I think about Joseph amen as he went from the pit amen to the palace from the prince amen to uh, from the prison to the prince overnight oh Saul he went from a donkey chaser to a king overnight night. One day he was chasing his father's donkeys and the next day he was king over Israel. Oh let's not forget Gideon. One day he was playing hide and seek and the next day he's leading God's army. It was an overnight thing. Oh listen saints of God. Amen. God has placed something on the inside of you and he wants you to be able to release that gift. Release amen. That anointing. Release that power and that blessing and that ministry that he has put on the inside of you for such a time as this. Oh, listen, saints of God, we are in the last days. We are in the moment and the glorious time for the church. God's getting us ready, amen, to bring us out. He said he would come back for, amen, a church, amen, a spotless church, a church without spot or wrinkle. A glorious church, hallelujah. Oh, listen, we cannot be glorious unless His glory is unleashed upon us. And God's preparing to unleash His glory, His His manifested presence revealed in our lives and in our service. Amen. In such a way, when you leave this place, I believe the glory of God will be upon you. That men and women in our community will know that that you've been with God. No, no, that you've been spending time with the Lord. Oh, Moses went up in the cloud. He spent the time with God. And when it came down, amen, his face shone with the glory of God so bright that people were afraid to look upon him. This is the day, amen, to make our hearts right. This is the day to unload, amen, the temptation. This is the day, amen, to come against your enemy and say enough is enough glory to God overnight amen God bless these hallelujah oh listen saints Peter went from denying amen to preaching one day amen the children of Israel was trapped by a trapped but the next day they saw their enemies destroyed glory to God amen glory just say amen tomorrow's my day Today's my day. I'm getting it now. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe the Lord. Amen. Has foreordained this day. You see it was all. It was all changed overnight. In other words while they were sleeping. God was working. While they were sleeping. God was working. Oh when we can't see it. He's working, church. He's working. When we can't feel it, He's working. When we're sleeping, He's still working. He never stops working on your behalf. He never stops working on your behalf. You may have been praying. You may have been seeking God for something. And you haven't seen any results. But you need to know your blessing is in the process. Your blessing is in the process. Amen. The process has already begun. It's already started. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, saints. 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 says, For our light affliction, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Thank God. Which is but for a moment. Hallelujah. And it worketh for us. Amen. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. It's but for 
a moment. You see, weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Hallelujah. Overnight, joy cometh in the morning. We will we'll let, amen, let somebody know, amen, in this place. You need to let your neighbor know, amen, amen, in this place that your blessing is on its way. Amen. Your blessing is on its way. It's in transit. Hallelujah. You see, when we order something online, amen, how many ever order something online? You go over there to, I'm telling you, you punch in something that you want, the first thing that's going to punch up is Amazon.com. It's going to show up. Ain't that right, brother-in-law? Amen. It's going to show up. Amazon.com. And, and when you purchase something there, you pay for it with a credit card. And it, amen, it belongs to you the instant you pay for it. But you have to wait for it to show up in your mailbox. It belongs to you. You've already paid for it. You've got a receipt. You've got an entitlement. Amen. To, amen, that thing that you have ordered. Amen. And then, amen, they will give you a tracking number. And you can track that thing. I'm telling you, it's got very specific. Amen. You can just track those things every day and almost every hour and every minute as it is coming. Hallelujah. Oh, listen, saints. But you got to wait on it. You got to wait on it. I think about Jairus. Amen. As he went to Jesus. Amen. He carried his need. Amen. He carried his request. Amen. To Jesus. That his daughter was sick and near death. Amen. And then Jesus turned and he goes and he is going with Jairus to his house to touch that little girl and to heal that body. But on the way there was a woman with an issue of blood that had been in that same situation for 12 years and she had spent all of her money she had went to every doctor every psychologist every psychiatrist every counselor and every therapist and she still had the problem hallelujah but one day as she saw Jesus and Jairus and the crowd passing by amen she said this is my day say it with me church this this is my day. As Jesus passed by, amen, she made up her mind. And she made a, a confession of faith. She said, amen, if I would just touch the hem of his garment, I will receive my blessing. If I can just get a hold of the Lord's garment, if I can just get a hold of him, amen, I will be healed. And so she got off the sideline. Amen. Listen, some of us today... We need to quit standing on the sideline. We need to quit sitting in the pew. We need to quit sitting there when the altar service is going on. Get off the sideline and press in. Hallelujah. And get a hold of the hem of his garment. Oh, she got off the sideline. She pressed through the crowd. She crawled. She fought her way. She nudged and she pushed. Amen. She done whatever it took. Amen. To get, amen, to where Jesus was and when she got there she grabbed the hem of his garment amen and the Bible said that Jesus stopped because he knew virtue had left him the anointing the gift and the power had left him amen and he turned and there she was amen he said who touched me who touched me oh this was kind of funny to the disciples I'm sure because the crowd was thronging him there were crowds were all around that were touching him. But he meant who had touched him with a spirit of expectancy. And she touched him. And she received her healing. And can you imagine Jairus as he's sitting over there? He's probably done looked at his, well, I left my home. He's probably looking at his watch. He's probably checking, hey man, his messages. 
He's probably looking at his wife sending messages. She's getting worse. She's getting worse, honey. She's getting worse. She's getting worse. And then, amen, here he's waiting for Jesus. And Jesus, amen, then started toward the house. He started in. And when he got there, he walked in. And they're already mourning. They're already grieving. They're already crying. Because they came and bring the message and said, it's too late the damsel is dead oh but it didn't stop Jesus Jesus went in the room he put everybody out he put everybody out he walked in there and he brought Jairus with him Jairus had the faith Jairus was the one who went to him Jairus was the one amen who amen called out to him and they went in there and he took amen that little girl by the hand and he lifted her up and she awoke Wake, amen, from her, amen, the sleep of death. She awake, amen, and awoke him, amen, and raised up, amen, and wanted something to eat. Glory to God. Oh, listen, amen, he ordered it. He went and petitioned. He went and prayed. He went and sought for the Lord to come, but he had to wait. He had to wait. Oh, but saints of God, I want you to know, amen, that there does come a day. There does come a time, hallelujah, if we will faithfully wait upon the Lord. Oh, Jesus has already paid, amen, the Amazon.com. He's, amen, it now belongs to you. Your blessing is on the way, amen, and, and you have endured the night. You have endured the trial. You have endured the test, amen, and you are sitting here in church, glory to God. You made it through the fire. You made it through the storm. You made it through, amen, all the backbiting and all the gossip. You made it through all the turmoil and all the strife. Glory to God. And here you are today, sitting in the house of God, in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. And today is your day. Glory to God. Amen. Today is your day. It's morning time. Your joy has come. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just get ready because a curse is about to be reversed. Glory to God. A curse is about to be reversed. Our text, amen, in our text, they're t they told the prophet, this place is pretty. This place is pleasant. It's pretty. It's beautiful. We like the neighborhood. It's a, it's a nice place. Amen. It's a, it's a great and awesome place to live. We like the view. But then they said, but the water is not. The water is cursed. It carries some kind of poison in it. And it's making the ground barren. Oh, in other words, the curse was killing their future. The curse was killing their future. It was killing their destiny. It was destroying their purpose. Amen. Listen, it didn't kill the man. It didn't kill the women. And it didn't kill the children. It didn't kill the trees. It didn't kill the plants. But it was killing their fruit. It was killing their fruit and had made them barren. They had made them un fruitful. They become fruitless and unproductive. Amen. It all looked good on the outside, but there was no fruit. There's no fruit. I wonder how many are coming to our churches today. They're looking good. Amen. They're looking good. But they're fruitless. And they're barren. One translation says, it caused the women to miscarry. It caused the women to miscarry. Nothing was being carried to full term. Nothing was being birthed. Amen. Listen, we know in the, in the Bible, Judas Iscariot, he aborted his purpose and his life was lost. There's a story in the Old Testament 
about a young prophet who came and brought the word of the Lord and the Lord told him, amen, when he went that he was not to go into anyone's house and abode. He was not to go in anyone's house and eat and fellowship with anyone in that country. And he went and delivered the message, amen, but, amen, there was one that, amen, convinced him to come into their house, to come and to sup with him. And finally he did. He came came into the house and he supped with, amen, that man and his family. And he ate there. And when he left there, he was destroyed. His purpose and his destiny was, amen, destroyed. Oh, Peter almost aborted his purpose when he denied Christ. But he came and repented and it was restored. Oh, these men in the city were saying everything around us is not the problem. It's in the stream. It's the bitter waters that are cursing the ground. Amen. They were losing their future. No babies are being born. So they decided to fight for their future. They decided to fight for their destiny. They decided, glory to God, that I am going to, I'm bound and determined to accomplish the purpose and the plan that Jesus has for my life. And when I leave this old lost and dying world, amen, my name is going to stand for something in the portals of glory. They decided to fight for their future. Their seed was being destroyed. Oh listen the greatest fear the devil has is that one day you will become who God has destined you to be and do what you are destined to do. Each one of us has a purpose and a plan. The Lord knew you. Amen. Before you were formed in your mother's womb. The Bible said we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained. Oh, listen, saints, he knew, amen, you may be here today and you've been told that you was a mistake. You've been told, amen, that you were a blunder, that you were a mess up. But I want you to know there's no mistakes in the kingdom of God. God knows right where you are and you, amen, have a destiny. You have a purpose. God has you here because he has a plan, amen, in your life. Amen. And there is a gift. There is something, a seed that has been sown on the inside of you. Amen. There are souls, amen, in this world that nobody else can touch but you. Amen. Nobody else can touch but you. I believe in divine relationships. I believe in divine acquaintances. In other words, God puts people in your path for a purpose. Amen. I've said this before, but, you know, I've heard people say, amen, that they worked at a place and they said, I want to leave this job. I don't want to go to work there anymore because I'm the only Christian there. God, amen, puts you there to minister so that the gospel could be shared. Hallelujah. There's something on the inside of you. And I know I said this last Sunday morning. There's something on the inside of you that the devil is scared of. Amen. You have a divine DNA inside of you. And every time the devil looks at you, he sees your divine potential. He sees a missionary. He sees an evangelist. He sees a pastor, a teacher of the word. He sees a leader. He sees an intercessor. He sees a witness for the kingdom of God. And he shakes in his boots. Amen. Every time you darken these doors, every time you crack the that Bible. Every time you get on your knees, glory to God. Why do you think when you try to read the Word of God, it seems like everything, amen, everybody in the world tries to call you. Everything, amen, in the world, amen, tries to get your attention. When you get on your knees in your prayer closet and you begin to pray, the first thing you do, amen, is start yawning, amen. You start yawning, amen.
Amen. You can't even keep your mind, amen, and comprehend what you're reading because the enemy comes to distract you. It's because he's afraid of you. He's afraid of that seed and it's been stored on the inside of you. Hallelujah. You see, the devil believes in you. Amen. He believes in you more than you believe in yourself. And he's afraid of the seed that you carry. And he wants to kill the seed before it's born. Well, listen, Joshua carried a dream. He carried a seed. Amen. Genesis chapter 37 and 19 says, And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him and cast him into some pit. And we will say, Some evil beast hath devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. You see, they weren't afraid of their little brother. They were afraid of his dream. They were afraid of his dream. The man in this city, he, they said, this is not right. This is not normal. We're not satisfied with just being in a pretty place and lose our destiny. They decided to fight for their future. I wonder who is here today. Who will fight for your future? Who will fight for your health? Who will fight for your dreams? Who will fight for your family? Who will fight for your ministry? Oh, this world is full of people who've lost their fight, lost their fire, and lost their passion. They've settled for pretty. They've settled for looking good. They're satisfied with just knowing they're saved and going to heaven. They've lost their burden for the lost. They've become barren, unproductive, unfruitful, and uncaring. These men in our text made a decision to change so that so they went to the man of God. The only way you'll be able to reverse the curse is to follow the steps of Hannah. Amen. Hannah was favored, she, but she was fruitless. Amen. And she, gave, uh, she was given a double portion, but she was barren. She came to the man of God, and the man represents the word of God. The man of God represents the word of God. 1 Samuel 1 and 17 says, Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. Oh, listen. Amen. Her curse was reversed. Amen. She conceived and had a son and named him Samuel. Amen. Who she gave to the Lord. The word of God. Amen. The word of God is, is the word of of blessing and the blessing is greater than the curse the blessing is greater than the curse in the Old Testament Balaam amen was hired by Balak to curse the chosen people of Israel but every time he tried to curse him amen every time he tried to speak a curse upon the children of Israel amen what came out of his mouth was blessing you see God has intended blessing for your life God has intended ministry for your life. God has intended amen for you because he has chosen you. He has chosen you glory to God and the blessing is stronger than the curse. Glory to God. Oh listen I wonder tonight amen or this morning who will receive the blessing? Who will receive the blessing so the curse will be reversed? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Would you stand this morning? Hallelujah. Would you stand? Glory to God. I want to ask our worship team to come. Our altar service. Glory to God. Listen, when the salt, when the salt hit the cursed water, the curse had to go. The curse had to go. The salt is a symbol of Jesus Christ. See, Him living in our hearts and our lives is what makes us the salt of the earth. Amen. When the salt hit that water, the curse was reversed. There was a divine reversal. The curse was destroyed. Hallelujah. 
and the water became pure. And the city, the men, the women, the trees, the plants, the crown became fruitful and became productive. Hallelujah. Listen, church. You may be here this morning and you've struggled all of your saved life. You struggled with a temptation. You struggled with a, a trial. You struggled with something that happened years ago that you had no control over. You struggled, amen, with something that has hindered you becoming fully what God has for you to do. I want you to know the curse is reversed. It is reversed. It is reversed. Hallelujah. I want every head bowed and every eye closed right now. If you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ is in this place. And He has already made provision. He's already gave His life on the cross of Calvary. He already shed His blood. He already paid the penalty. And there's nothing more He can do for you. But He's calling you to an altar to receive all the provision and all the blessing. Are you here? You say, Pastor, I need Jesus in my heart. I need Jesus in my heart. You may be here and you've been distracted. And you've lost the presence of God. You've lost the glory of God. Are you here? He's here to restore you. He's here. Glory to God. To bring you back to the fold. Glory. Glory to God. Now, I want you to look at me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The curse is reversed. The cursed is reversed. That woman with the issue of blood, she couldn't stay on the sideline. She couldn't stay in her place of comfort. But she had to come. She had to come. And when she came, she received. She received. I want you, amen, to come this morning and receive your blessing. The blessing is greater than the curse. Come this morning, receive your blessing. Would you come? I want you to line up across here. I want our prayer, uh, our prayer warriors to come. Amen. Those who've been praying before services, I want you to come. And I want you to find someone, amen, to pray for today. I want you to pray, amen, for, amen, these that come. Would you come? Hallelujah. Amen. You're coming. You're saying, I receive the blessing. I'm putting the past in the past. I'm putting, amen, that thing behind me, and I'm receiving the blessing. The curse is being reversed. The curse is being reversed. Come on, church. Come on. Come on. I believe there's more than this. I believe there's more. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hallelujah. If you would come and file in behind these, and I want you to help them pray. Amen. Come and file behind these and pray. Amen. These.
come with us in worship this morning. Would you stand? Hallelujah. I exalt.